Spectacle Island lies in the water off the east coast of downtown Boston. There is no road, no bridge. The only way to get there is to swim. Unless you're really lucky with a power armor jetpack and some chems. The shortest distance is between the Warwick Homestead and the southwestern shore of the island. But the docks on the island are on the northern shore, so I'm going to swim there from the castle area. Now power armor sinks, and unless I want a really long walk along the ocean floor, I'm gonna have to ditch my power armor here and swim across. I suppose I could always discover the location, go fetch my power armor, and then fast travel here. But but for now, I'm not going to take the time to do that and instead explore it outside of my power armor. I built this character to live in her power armor all the time, so I have no idea how well she'll do against enemies on the island. Spectacle Island is a real island off the coast of Boston. Today, it is 105 acres big and is much larger than it used to be. Here's a map of the island back in 1909 and you can see that it was very tiny. It's called Spectacle Island not because the island is itself a spectacle, but because an overhead shot of the island resembles spectacles. At least it did centuries ago when it was first named. The reason it's a larger island today is because for centuries, Boston residents have been using it as a junk pile. Because it was far away from mainland Boston, they threw all their trash here to avoid the smell. Because it stank so bad and because it was so remote, there was little human habitation here. There were two hotels built on this island in around 1847, but they were closed in 1857 when it was discovered that those hotels were used for gambling, prostitution, and other illegal activities. The year the hotels were closed, they built a horse rendering plant on the island, which dismembered horses turning them into glue, and later they put a trash incinerator on the island, which remained active until 1935. When the city closed down the trash incinerator, locals continued to just dump their waste on the island, but since it wasn't burnt up, it just piled up and up and up over a span of 30 years. The trash pile was so big and so oozy that people say in the 1950s, a bulldozer sank into the garbage. It was completely swallowed up by the filth and they were unable to retrieve it. Spectacle Island remained a disgusting, raking landmass that people of Boston simply avoided until the 1990s. In 1992, the city of Boston began a huge earth-moving project called the Big Dig. This project rerouted the central artery of Interstate 93, the primary highway that goes through the heart of downtown Boston, into a 3.5 mile underground tunnel called the Thomas P. O'Neill Jr. Tunnel. It also included construction of the Ted Williams Tunnel, which is the Mass Pike Tunnel we can explore in Fallout 4. I did an entire video on the Mass Pike Tunnel, which you can watch here. This Big Dig removed so much dirt and rock from Boston Boston, that the city just didn't know what to do with it, so they dumped it all on Spectacle Island. They buried a century's worth of garbage, waste, and other filth in meters and meters of rock, sand, dirt, and clay. The city intentionally placed it here because they wanted to turn Spectacle Island into a park. Instead of it being a reeking place people avoided, they wanted people to come and holiday here. And so they covered the island with all of the dirt they extracted during the big dig and capped the island with a two-foot layer of thick, compact clay. On top of that, they covered the island with between two to five feet of topsoil. They then planted trees, created walking and biking paths, built docks and other buildings, and turned it into the beautiful marina park that Spectacle Island is today. This was a huge undertaking, and it wasn't until 2006 that the city opened the island to the public. Now, in the Fallout world, the Great Divergence happened around the 1950s. That's when the history of the Fallout universe diverged from our own history. In our world, the Big Dig happened in 1992, which means that at the time of the Divergence, Spectacle Island was a reeking garbage pile. But it's not when we find it. It's not a tiny little island that resembles Spectacle's, 
it's a large, built-up landmass, which means that in the Fallout universe, something like the Big Dig must have happened, resulting in a whole bunch of excess soil and rock that was then deposited on top of Spectacle Island, building it up to the island that we find in Fallout 4. I believe this is further corroborated by not only the existence of the Mass Pike Tunnel, the Ted Williams Tunnel, which was created during the 1992 Big Dig project, but also the fact that Bethesda created a quest in the game called The Big Dig. This is the quest where we go with Bobby Nono's and Good Neighbor underground to rob from the mayor of Diamond City. We not only dig underground, which is why it's called the Big Dig, but we also travel through the subterranean metro tubes, which must have been created by Bostonians during the pre-war Big Dig project. At any rate, when we arrive at Spectacle Island, we find clear evidence of previous human habitation. We emerge from the water in a small dock, where we still find a rowboat floating. In this dock area, we find bowls, beer bottles, coolers filled with food, giving us a notion that this island is either still occupied or was recently abandoned. We find evidence of its use pre-war. There's a house on a hill and it's completely destroyed. A child's swing dangles broken from a nearby tree. Instead of this being public property, in the Fallout universe, this must have been private land. And on the ground nearby lies the first of many corpses we'll find. This is the corpse of an unnamed settler. The body is fresh. It's not blue like the ones we find in Jamaica Plain. This man was killed recently. We find little evidence of what happened to him inside the house, but the house is an absolute wreck. The roof is completely torn away, as well as most of the second floor. In the middle of the ground floor, we do find a mini nuke, however, which seems a strange place to find this thing. It looks almost as if it had been fired at this house, but remained undetonated. Heading up the stairs, we find a perch that gives us a great view of the island. Off to the east, we see a wrecked barge with a bunch of shipping containers spilling out into the water. In the middle of the island, we see some sort of rickety shack, and then off to the south, we find more wrecked ships. We'll be sure to explore each of these locations. Hopping down from the house, we find a big pile of furniture stacked up. I don't think it's very likely that this was placed here due to the nuclear detonation. It seems strange that such a forceful explosion would cherry pick three pieces of furniture and then drop them in one pile on the ground. Instead, I think this may have been moved by the settler whom we found, who may have been trying to use the furniture as scrap wood for building other shacks or maybe even for firewood. Next to the house is a workshop. Inside the workshop, we find a power armor frame, as well as a bunch of goodies, a hunting rifle, an ammo crate filled with ammunition, a locked toolbox with randomized loot inside, and even a chemistry station. Right next to the workshop is a little garden house. All we find here are a couple bags of fertilizer. Well, we didn't find anyone alive here, only death. Let's go deeper into the island to see if we can find anyone alive. Heading up the hill, we see that shack we saw from the house. It looks like the remains of a farm. The settler we found must have tried really hard to turn this into a farm before something happened. We see a tiny chicken wire fence outlining the bounds of the farm he was to build, and beneath this shack, which he might have made from scrap wood torn from the house, we find crates of supplies, gardening utensils, and even a water pump. Someone or something stopped this man before he could turn this into a working farm. Off in the distance, we see another shack. Heading down the hill, we can explore it until... I don't know how many hours I've put into this game and those Mirelurg jump scares still surprise me. Heading up the ramp, we find a second corpse. This is another unnamed settler. And this tells us that the island was being settled, turned into a farm by a group of settlers, at least two, possibly more, not just the home of one man. And we get an idea of what might have happened to them. Mirelurks. Inside this little shack, we find another corpse. This is the corpse of a traitor. It may be that the settlers had built Spectacle Island up into a community that was thriving enough to warrant trade. After all, why would a trader have come all the way to Spectacle Island unless there were people here with wealth enough to trade? But for a trader to be killed here before she could return home tells us that something violent and sudden happened. Off in the distance, we see something scurry by, and now we must be on our guard for we know that there are mire lurks around every corner. Nearby is a hill and we see some sort of shack at the top. Climbing up the hill, we notice that there's a beacon or tower attached to this shack, but we can't admire it for long before we are attacked. 
Once dead, we can go and explore the shack. We see an electrical wire attaching the shack to a nearby tree. What's all this about? Going inside, we find the workshop but we don't have access to it. We can loot a cooler on the ground, and on a nearby table we find a note, labeled Signal Checklist. Number one, make sure the wires to the generator are all connected properly. Last thing we need is another short blowing out the generator, Randy. Number two, the generator must be on before turning on the signal tower. I suggest you stay out of the water when flipping the generator switch. Just saying. And number three, you'll know the signal is playing when... Well, you'll just know. Once the feedback goes away, it will sound like there's nothing coming out of the speakers. There is, but only the Meyer lurks can hear it. Aha! So the settlers had rigged up some sort of sonic system that repulsed the Meyer lurks. It played a high-pitched signal that only the Meyer lurks could hear that drove them crazy, pushing them off of Spectacle Island. That's how the settlers cleared the island to settle it. And somehow the generators must have stopped. They're not running now, which explains why we find so many Meyer lurks here, and it explains why the settlers are all dead. So... We need to find a way to get these Meyer lurks off the island or they'll keep coming back. We can't flip the switch. The note says to turn on the generator first. Where's the generator? Well, we can follow the electrical wire from this shack down the hill. We pass by a red tractor and then off in the distance, we see another little shack. Heading on over, we find a duffel bag filled with randomized loot beneath a tarp and the corpse of a raider. Ha! Huh. Everyone has been settlers and traders before we found this raider, and right next to this raider we find the corpse of Randy. This is the very same Randy referred to in the note. Randy was the man at one time who caused a short blowing out the generator. I guess we are to believe that Randy caused another short, which blew out the generator again, allowing the Meyer lurks to raid the island. But the positioning of these bodies might hint at something darker. Could Randy have been in the employ of raiders? Maybe Randy was a raider, and he infiltrated this community pretending to be one of them, helping them to rebuild, but with an ultimate plan of shorting out the generator so that the Mirelurks would kill everyone on the island, allowing he and his raider buddies to come back, turn the generator on, and then have the island for themselves. We don't find any gunshots or signs of a struggle between Randy and this raider, which makes me think that they may have been in cahoots, but they underestimated the ferocity of these Mirelurks after they short-circuited the generator, the Meyer lurks invaded the island, killing everyone, even Randy and his raider. Back to the electrical cords, we can follow them across a rickety scrap wood bridge towards a big green tugboat, half sunken into the sea. It's here that we find the generator. It's a giant white generator in the very back of the tugboat on the middle floor. Before we flip it on, we can explore, and next to a large toolbox in the front of the middle floor of the boat, we find a fat man. Well, this will come in handy. We found a mini nuke in the wrecked house and a fat man on the ship. Is Bethesda trying to tell us something? I hope something horrible doesn't happen. Heading upstairs, we can explore the control room. In the back of the control room, next to some brain fungus, we find the end of dungeon steamer trunk. I bet that brings back some memory for you. Not really, X6. But in a locker next to the trunk, we find the luck bobblehead. There's only one way to give 110%. Your luck has been permanently increased by one. All right, we are more lucky. Since we're so lucky, I'm sure nothing horrible is gonna happen to us if we go back downstairs, open the circuit breaker lid and flip it on. As soon as we flip it on, we hear a roar coming from outside.
Thank God for the Wazer Wifle. The Wazer Wifle is the weapon we get from a certain unnamed synth, which has unlimited ammo capacity, which means I never have to reload it. And it came in handy here. Gosh darn it, these Marlurks and that blasted Marlurk Queen. I typically don't have to heal myself a lot because I'm in power armor, but I was squishy outside my tin can. I ended up having to use a refreshing beverage. And man, was it refreshing. Heading up the hill, we get attacked by another Marlurk. And we'll probably get attacked by even more as we continue forward. When we at last return to the metal shack, we can finally turn on the circuit breaker. It works wonders! The Mirelurks responded in pain and terror as soon as we turned that thing on, but after a brief moment they couldn't handle it anymore and they began to flee. The rest of the Mirelurks on this island have been pushed to the shore. As we continue to explore, we'll find them and they'll run away from us, which means we'll have to chase them down to kill them. Heading due east of this little shack, we find an old outhouse with an interesting scene. There's a locked first aid kit filled with chems on the ground, and here we see a woman bending a man over her knee with a paddle, spanking him. Well, I suppose there are more humiliating ways to die, but this pose is certainly not one I'd like to find myself in at the end. With the signal restored, we can finish exploring the island. Now, there are a lot of interesting floating shacks and ships all around Spectacle Island. I covered them in my video on Ocean Floor Secrets, which I published a short while ago. You can find that video here. So for now, we're just going to talk about what we find on Spectacle Island proper. Just off the shore, we find a sunken red boat. In the sand next to this boat is a skeleton next to a grave. There's a shovel right next to the skeleton. It looks like this man had just finished burying a friend when the end of the world happened, or when he succumbed to radiation. He dies on top of the grave that he dug for his friend. South of here, we find a boat floating in the water. Inside the boat is a safe. This safe has already been unlocked, but we don't find an owner anywhere to be seen. However, we do find a collection of human bones scattered in the bottom of the boat. Heading west, we find another tiny dock. This dock is much smaller than the one we find by the wrecked house. And following the shore west, we find a lot of human remains embedded in the sand and the rocks, which could potentially have sinister implications. We remember from our pre-war history that Spectacle Island used to be a big garbage dump, at least in the real world and possibly in the Fallout world as well. If true, who knows what Bostonians had dumped into this junk pile? Could it have been a place where the mob dumped corpses? Or where people went to go murder their enemies and leave their remains? This skeleton and the one next to it are not gingerly placed on top of the sand. They're embedded deep into the mud, rock, and clay, which tells us that these remains have been uncovered by erosion, by the wind, waves, and rain over the span of 200 years. It tells us that these bodies were buried in the trash in pre-war days. Continuing north along the shore, we find another Mirelurk hunter, and a Mirelurk Deep King flees from us. We've got to put on our sprinting boots and chase after the guy. That sonic emitter really works wonders. He didn't even attack, he just fled. Inside this wrecked yacht, there's not much, just a wooden explosives chest. But on the shore, we find an interesting scene. Embedded in the sand, we find a skeleton holding a suitcase. On the ground next to it is some pre-war money and a gold-plated flip lighter. This may be more evidence to what I was talking about earlier. Mob activities or other crimes going on at Spectacle Island in pre-war days, where bodies and booty were buried. The suitcase doesn't have much, it just has bottle caps and jet, which could pose some lore issues for those who get upset finding jet in pre-war containers, but I'm just gonna chalk this up to the game's random container generation. Continuing along the western shore, we kill a Mirelurk razor claw that flees for its life. 
but it does not get away. Just off the western coast of the island, underwater, we find a completely wrecked house. I showed this off in my video on underwater secrets, and you got a better look of it in that video because I turned off the underwater effect. But in this house, we find the skeleton of a man in a wheelchair watching television. Underneath his wheelchair is a bottle of vodka, and he sits right next to a radio which, miraculously, still works underwater. We can then head to the eastern side of the island where we found that shipping barge where it had wrecked and spilled all of its shipping containers. In one of them, we find a whole bunch of dryers. These are functional containers. We can loot them. And then we can go from container to container to see what we can find. There's a yellow wooden crate in a sunken blue container. Right next to the barge falling off of it is a container filled with nuclear waste barrels. These containers have been made into a little bit of a ramp. We can use them to jump up on top where we find another settler corpse. This corpse is right next to a container filled with vault tech shipping boxes. Looks like this barge was shipping something to vault tech I wonder which one of the vaults this was destined to. 114? 81? In the container right next to this, we find a bunch of crates with a first aid kit, and then we can go up a ramp to another level of these crates. Here we find a bunch of creepy mannequins knocked over on the ground and then staring at us as we climb further. At the top, we find a small maze between these shipping containers. In one, we find a novice locked red toolbox, and we can go this way and that, trying to find our way out of the maze, until at length we come out the other side. Turning around though, we find a big green container of filled with safes. A couple of these already have their doors knocked off. Some of them are empty, but many of them are still locked. We find a novice locked one, an advanced locked one, and an expert locked one. After we loot these safes, we can peer down on the ground and find another one right on this lip of the barge. This is an advanced lock safe with more wonderful randomized loot. I swam around underneath, but I didn't find any more. But going southeast, we find one final shack. Here we find a do not feed the bears sign. You know how much I love these. And inside the shack is another corpse of a settler. This one, however, is right next to an advanced lock safe. Looks like the settlers on this island had found the safes and had been slowly going through them trying to unlock them. This guy was unlocking this one when he got killed by Mirelurks. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full pre-war history of Spectacle Island. You can turn this island into a settlement. I've already done a video on my settlement build for this place, which you can watch here. I am really proud of how my Spectacle Island settlement turned out. The island comes with a bunch of weird quirks concerning the settlement build system, and I cover them in that video. What are your thoughts on Spectacle Island? Did you like this little adventure that Bethesda put together for us? Or did you not even know this place existed? What did you use the island for? Is it your primary Minuteman base, or did you use it to round up your synth slaves? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of your comments, and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I publish a new video six days a week, so if you want to make sure that you don't miss my video tomorrow, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a t-shirt shop, folks. If you would like an Oxhorn or a Fallout-inspired t-shirt, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.